Hey, how's it going? So um, I've been working on a new algorithmically generated music workflow that I wanted to show you. Um, about uh, 10 years ago, uh, the good people at Chord Punch put out a record uh, of mine called Squeaky Shoe Core EP. Um, and that was made entirely with pure data, which is a, um, it's a uh, patching language uh, where you can wire together DSP um, elements and uh, make, you know, kind of build these synthesizers from scratch. Um, and, you know, so that, that album was made entirely with PD. Um, but before I got into PD, I was doing and, and sort of procedurally generated stuff. I was doing uh, music with trackers, so um, tracked music. Um, and trackers came from sort of uh, demo scene back in the, I guess, 80s and 90s with Amigas, uh, Commodore 64s and stuff like that. And people had to you know, make these um, demos with music that was highly compressed. Uh, so it used, used short samples and uh, was very efficient. And it had this kind of like tracker interface, like what you can see today in this program, OpenMPT. Um, so my new workflow is a hybrid of those two approaches uh, using uh, a, tra a tracker. So OpenMPT, which used to be called Modplug. Um, and using uh, pure data at, via PD VST as a plugin. So basically, PD is running on top of um, on top of yeah, you know, plugged in via the VST interface into Modplug, um, and you can kind of see that in action here. I've got this uh, this track here, PD CF Punch, which uh, there's a couple of different tracks going into it. So a vocal track and a beat here oh that one's disabled uh and if i press play you can see these sliders and stuff here which are being manipulated by these numbers over here okay there's something going wrong there but uh anyway you can you can see the uh, numbers changing uh and yeah what's great about this approach is you can kind of like uh have this nice interplay between algorithmic stuff um and tracked stuff uh, and so, I mean, a lot of my track stuff is, is generated anyway. I, you know, I have this project, um, where this Lisp project, uh, drill bit, which you can find on GitHub. Um, and that basically generates, um, impulse tracker files that you know, it, it takes, uh, samples and sequences them together in different ways using a uh, Lisp code. And there's a whole bunch of different generators in there, which I, I still use. I have this web interface here uh, that sort of um, I've hooked up to that so that I can quickly generate stuff. This isn't really supposed to be public, but um, you can use it to generate these like basic loops. Uh, and there's a few different a few different generators. So there's another one which makes like 808 type beats. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, and then I can download those as a impulse tracker module and load them up into Modplug Tracker. So that one was called EBOA. Go to my downloads folder. EBOA. And now I've got that in here as a, as a tracked file. And so that was all well and good, but I found that I missed the kind of like live element. And I also have a large library of, you know, PD patches built up for doing um, algorithmic effects and stuff like that. So I'll just show you an example um, of, you know, how, how that works. So if I put into this effects channel here, I've made this one called PD background. Um, and you can't see the PD interface at the moment because it's in, um, in uh it's not in debug mode but i'll show you i'll show you in a second how to enable that so this one basically it takes a seed so it's the same every time the uh, random elements of it are, this, are replicated um, each time i press play because i like to have things deterministic and then you can turn up these different elements so in here there's a kind of vinyl crackle in the background now and um 
I can put in some other stuff like the sound of the International Space Station. That's the sound of the space station and some rain. That gives... That's just to give the whole track kind of like a background texture sound. Um, and it has automatic compression on there, so... You can hear it kind of fading. Uh, no, it's not. I have to put it through master. Yep. Okay, so... You can hear as those beats kick in, it kind of like drops the volume um, so that it's not the background sound isn't interfering with the actual music. So I'll show you how, you know, like that's all wrapped up in a way where you don't actually get the PD interface. Um, so that's kind of like done as a VST, which just does what it's supposed to. Um, but in order to, uh, in order to be able to actually see the PD interface, so you can see what's going on in the hood, what I'll do is I'll just save this. Uh, module 8 and now I'll close that down because uh, okay and then I'll go into um, the VSTs folder and I'll actually edit the Hopefully you can see this, but I'll actually edit the PD background, the definition file for that for that instrument, um, the PD VST definition file, and I'll turn on debug to true, so that we'll be able to see the PD interface when we load it now. So if I go back to mod plug and I open up that same module, now you can see that it's got this actual PD interface here. So that's what that background sound module looks like on the inside and uh, you can see the kind of compressor here working um, and these various hums that it's generating um, each one of those hums kind of like whoops dragged myself there up into the air ideal uh, each one of these hums um, has this kind of like patch inside that uses the VST time info, the actual position in the song, to do the random switching about. So what that means is basically it's just deterministic based on the seed you set up and the current time in the song as to which bit of the hum it's playing. And I did that because I wanted it to be the same each time, basically. But yeah, so I really like this workflow where you've got um, PD running inside Modplug Tracker, and you can have these tracked elements themselves sometimes algorithmically generated uh, with also, you know, but then you can tweak it. So you can come in here and like rewrite it using a tracker interface, and then uh, you can go back into P uh, VST, uh, PD to, to like manipulate stuff. So I'll just show you another, uh, what's another good one? Yes, yeah, so I've got this, uh, that's not gonna be any good. Yeah, anyway, so I can use that same um, that same punch through uh, there. And basically, the other cool thing you can do is um, actually write values back to, actually, let me remove that one. You can actually use PD itself to generate MIDI that gets written back into the pattern. So you've got this kind of like full loop where, and one I particularly like that I discovered the other day was, um, actually just gonna have to save this first as a, open mpt file because the it file doesn't support it but if i go open mpt add a few more channels there and i'm going to save that one yep that's module 8 and so i'll show you the this this cool thing where you can like get pd itself to write midi back into the pattern so you can kind of like take algorithmically generated ideas and bake them into the actual tracker file um, which is quite fun. So I've got this, this patch I just call PD Ideas, and it's just like basically empty, but with a few useful things. So like the song position, some parameters, um, and this one here, bend out. So what that does is send a MIDI bend signal back into uh, back into Modplug. So if I set up this track here, and I go select that one for recording, uh, and I'll actually just get a little bit of an instrument here. Um, so something that we'll be able to hear clearly about a... 
And we'll just play this R sound because then we can pitch bend it using the pitch bend thing, which would be fun. Right, so I'm just going to play that. Yeah, so now I've got that sound, and what I want to do is just put in like a pitch bend in here. Now I'm just going to wiggle this manually with this here, the slider, but you could actually set that up, you know, use the incoming timing position info and, you know, have some kind of algorithm that wobbled it around according to some algorithm and a randomly generated seed or whatever, which is probably what I'll do in the future for making some nice uh, pitch wobbles. Um, yeah, so now what I'm going to do is say, oh, I want this to actually record. So I want, I want Modplug to record the pitch bend coming out of the MIDI there. So I'm going to say, I'm going to open up the editor and I'm going to say, record MIDI out to pattern editor. You can also record parameter changes, which is super cool. Um, so you can fiddle around using your MIDI controller or whatever as this plays, and it'll actually record the parameter changes onto these channels. So that again, you could like, combine live performance and uh, kind of like live takes with um, algorithmically generated stuff and also tracked stuff. So kind of like putting it all together, which, you know, I'm finding very exciting for me. It's, uh, it's a pinnacle that I've been trying to reach for many years and it's only made available, been made possible because of a new um, PD, PD VST that got put out uh, by I'm going to forget his name, but I should look that up. Here we go. Lucada, put out by. Anyway, thank you to Lucada, who is at um, git.newbegris.com.ar, Argentinian fellow. But this, yeah, this has been a real uh, lifesaver for me. Oh, Lucas. Cordiviola. Lucas Cordiviola. Yeah. So I'm super grateful for uh, for that. Um, <clears throat> but yes, let's look at recording this pitch bend. So basically, I've got MIDI record on there. And now when I... Well, that's weird. Okay, what happened there was I forgot that I had this connected. So what this is doing is taking the current position and just outputting a note that continually rises as the position goes up. So I'm going to disable that. I'm going to turn it off. And it seems I'm not able to. Why? Let's just remove that. Okay, let's try that one again. So what we're going to do is just record some pitch bend values into this channel here, but you could see these, it's, it'll appear in this column, the pitch bend, uh, and it's this asterisk 70 kind of stuff. So if I wobble this around, you can see those yellow values appearing. And now when I play it back, you can hear it wobbling. Yeah, and that's actually recorded the values into the track permanently there. And you can do the same thing with, um, so generating actual MIDI uh, notes, like what I was doing before. So you can use this position to figure out where you are in the track and uh, write notes in as well. So you can kind of use PD itself to algorithmically generate, generate um, sequences, which is uh, also quite good. And I believe also uh, you can use CTL out so that's uh, sending MIDI values like, you know, to set parameters and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, that's basically it. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, it's just, I'm really enjoying this hybrid of uh, Modplug Tracker and PDVST running together. Um, and I've been writing a whole bunch of new stuff, which I'm hoping to make available soon. Uh, but I'll, I'll certainly talk about it here when I've got something that I'm ready to show. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in and uh, checking that out. I hope someone else finds Modplug, uh, sorry, OpenMPT with PDVST to be useful.
Thank you very much.